Jonah Vigil. I'm a filmmaker from Seattle, Washington. And basically the whole way this documentary came about was that I had received an invitation from a friend and Polish filmmaker to document and pretty much just capture an entire performance art biennale up in the northern foothills of India, specifically Chandigarh and Morney Hills. Um, I really had no idea what I was getting into jumping on this project. My understanding of the medium as a whole probably just um, was having seen some pretentious feeling YouTube videos as well as maybe a couple pieces that just in their execution lacked any sort of discernible message so it always kind of challenged uh, my notion of what is art, uh, what goes into uh, the planning behind a piece and its validity when presented to the world. Um, having said that, um, it sounded like a really great opportunity and being up in the very northernmost region of India, specifically pretty close to the Pakistani border, um, I couldn't pass that up. Uh, the, the potentially life-threatening scenario that it, it also had attached to it um, was intriguing. So I booked a ticket like that after a few days struggle of getting my uh, visa approved in Amsterdam. Don't say you're a filmmaker trying to get into India. I did have my reservations going into the project. Uh, would there be a point of contact at the airport to pick me up? Was this some sort of elaborate ruse to get Americans up in the northern part of India? I had no idea, but like I said, the opportunity sounded like a real adventure, and what follows is that adventure. Hope you enjoy. After arriving in Chandigarh and being transported by one of the assistants to the holding house for all the performance artists, I had an opportunity to speak with some of them and basically just get a better feel for what exactly the Biennale was about, the organization, and I was just eagerly looking forward to making it up to the mountain.
each week we'd have a new batch of artists from all over the world come in and they would be driven down to the city and basically just have a chance to do some shopping for any sort of materials, wardrobe, anything they might need for their performances, um, as well as do a little bit of shopping. Uh, also, alcohol was a pretty hot commodity, so this was definitely the opportunity to stock up before going back up into the hills, as you can see. Sorry, but I don't want to be a, an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful. But we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed, but we have shut ourselves in. Machinery that gives abundance has left us in want. Our knowledge has made us cynical, our cleverness hard and unkind. We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent, and all will be lost. The aeroplane and the radio have brought us closer together. The very nature of these inventions cries out for the goodness in men, cries out for universal brotherhood, for the unity of us all. Even now, my voice is reaching millions throughout the world, millions of despairing men, women, and children, victims of a system that makes men torture and imprison innocent people. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass and dictators die, and the power they took from the people will return to the people. And so long as men die, liberty will never perish. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes. Men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think, and what to feel, who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle, use you as cannon fodder. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines. You are not cattle. You are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate. Only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. Soldiers, don't fight for slavery, fight for liberty. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke, it is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man, nor a group of men, but in all men, in you. You, the people, have the power. The power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Then, in the name of democracy, let us use that power. Let us all unite. Let us fight for a new world, a decent world that will give men a chance to work, that will give youth a future and old age a security. 
By the promise of these things, brutes have risen to power. But they lie. They do not fulfill that promise. They never will. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. Now let us fight to fulfill that promise. Let us fight to free the world, to do away with national barriers, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Let us fight for a world of reason, a world where science and progress will lead to all men's happiness. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite! Can you hear me? Wherever you are, the clouds are lifting. The sun is breaking through. We are coming out of the darkness into the light. We are coming into a new world, a kindlier world, where men will rise above their hate, their greed and brutality. The soul of man has been given wings, and at last he is beginning to fly. He is flying into the rainbow, into the light of hope, into the future, the glorious future that belongs to you, to me, and to all of us. So there's a bit of you in it. 
please read carefully. Okay, okay. Take care. 40 rupees? Ma'am, please. <laughs> yes, it's the record. Okay. Don't. You man does. Please read. Please read. No, it's art. It's art. Yes. Heart. Heart. Yes. I, I try to give you my heart. You oh, refuse. I refuse for sure. I don't trust. I take rupees. So, uh, what is the final price? Name your price. It's okay. our art. You know, it's okay, speculation. 40? 40. 40. 10. 10? Okay. This is 30, my dear. Thank you, G. Take it and read it carefully. Thank you. Another activity that the artists were encouraged to participate in was taking a little road trip up to a temple. There's usually some sort of festival going on where a man would stand on the edge of one of these cliffs and dance for hours while doing some sort of fire dance. Someone also mentioned they were probably high on something, but I did not want to pass that opportunity either.
One of our amazing chefs invited me to take a little motorcycle ride up to the top of the mountain in his neighborhood. I brought the cameras with me, it was beautiful. Although I believe his family was a little bit uncomfortable with me coming in with my camera, so I left that out, but it was a really beautiful road trip and I'm so grateful that I got to take it. This is what is known as an open session, and it's basically just where an artist or several artists pick a location at random, and you know whatever comes to them in the moment, that's what they do. Sometimes they incorporate what they're doing with the other artists, not necessarily. As a filmmaker, it was it was a little difficult to be able to find some way to weave it all together, so I ended up just trying to let the visuals speak for themselves.
after the Biennale was finished, a friend and photographer invited me to come check out Delhi with him, look at his old college, get something to eat, maybe listen to some music. And that's exactly what I needed after a month of shooting just non-stop performances. Yeah, I definitely took advantage of that. There was a night where I guess he had some other plans, and so I got left with uh, a group of his friends. Cocaine was involved. Some interesting, <laughs> some interesting stories as well. Uh, some terrorist links, but uh, yeah, it was amazing, and wouldn't have uh, taken it back for the world. That's like seven kebab for a dollar. <laughs> seven kebabs for a dollar. <laughs>
along. I don't have so much time. This is the first time I have the chance of showing myself. You have never seen me because I do not exist. I do offer my time to give you illusions. I do right in the dark. What to correct if nothing has never existed? There is no way back when you're right in the dark. Still, my hands move, trying to affirm that I have tried to explain the unexplainable. Come closer. Come closer. I don't have so much time. Touch my belly button. Is that a proof that we have been born? I'm nothing. Every single clock so precious when I am. I can't sleep. The question was, 